Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for being here. Oh my gosh, look at this, my big old ears. Oh, what's, what the hell, I have ears. Um, it's nice to see you guys, thank you for being here. Today we are talking to um, John Foraker from one Hi, buddy. Here he comes, here comes boss man. You're gonna love it. He's adorable. Don't tell him I said that. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Shale. Oh my gosh, this is fun. I never really pay, hi, Paradise. Yes, I know, I follow you. Um, <laughs> I love you too. Oh my gosh, that's nice. Hello from Austin, hello back. I hey, tried uh, to, oh, here, here he comes. John Forker. Hi. Hi, Jen. How are you? Great, thanks. How are you? Really good. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Our call got moved off from today. It did. You, know, you tried some... to run from me, but it's not going to work. <laughs> it's okay. Um, you're, back on, you're back on Tuesday. <laughs> you know I'm going to hunt you down. Um, okay, so John, I want to jump right into it because we have a lot uh, to cover and I want people to hang in there because this is an exciting half hour about Once Upon a Farm's entrepreneur EAP, Entrepreneur Allyship Program. And uh, if we could start off, please, if you would please introduce yourself, Mr. Forker. <laughs> I'm John Forker. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Once Upon a Farm. And um, I'm super excited to be here. Jan and Ari and Cassandra's <laughs> partner in, in crime. Okay, and you're also a dad of four. Yes, dad of four. You also live in Northern California. I and do. you also um, took Annie's and, you know, Annie's Organics and with the Cheddar Bunnies and, you know, everybody loves Annie's and built mm -hmm. it up. And then yeah, from, from a little thing to a really big thing, then we took it public. General Mills yeah. bought it. I stayed there for a while. We had a lot mm -hmm. of fun with that, with that brand. And then um, you and I met and decided we met because we were, you were an early investor in Once Upon a Farm, and right. I was interested in coming in because I knew that this company made food for kids and babies unlike any company that I had ever seen before. And as a mom, I, I knew that this company solved a problem for me, or would have solved a problem, especially when my kids were little, but even solved a problem for me with bigger kids, which is farm fresh, high pressure, pro can you say it, John? You know I say it wrong. HPP. High pressure pascalization is what it stands for, but we just like to say pressure. High pressure. Yeah, but can you describe it since I always say it wrong and since people are here? So we take all of our delicious veggies and fruits and we mash them all up together and then we pressure them instead of heat treat them at about 40 degrees temperature so they don't get hot. And we do it at five or six times the pressure per square inch at the deepest part of the ocean. So it just knocks back all So what he's telling you, okay, there you go. okay, good. So it, it's a different way of making food safe for kids and babies that preserves, instead of like having cat food goo inside um, kids, you know, baby food, or it, it, it actually preserves the texture and all the vitamins and the nutrients and the, the kind of the vivid flavors that kids love. And because it does that, it's not just a baby food. It turns out that kids love it. Grown-ups love it, grandmas love it, grandpas love it, everybody loves it. My teenager is our biggest customer. Okay, so could you please talk about what it means to be a mission-driven company? And can you talk a little bit about um, O Farm's mission that we came up with right from the start? So the first time that we met, we started talking about like the challenges that kids all over America face getting access to good food and education and books and all these things that you've spent so much of your life working on. And um, we said, hey, if we're gonna get together and do something, let's get together and do something in a business that focuses on that. So mission-driven company is something that drives to a bigger mission than just selling product and making things. It's actually to try to make the world a better place and drive positive social impact. So we, when we first met, we high-fived and said, hey, let's do something together and let's do this to go after that so that we can get these 
really great quality products to kids all over America. And that's what we've been doing. It really is. And you are dogged in your pursuit of actually following through. I've never seen anyone who said, yeah, we're going to do this. And then you actually spend all day, every day, making sure that it happens. You are the reason O-Farm is a mission-driven company. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. But although I have to say everyone, I think everyone who works at the company, that's part of what we all love about it. Don't you think? Yeah. People are attracted to companies like that. It's in their, it's in the DNA and, who wants to just go do a job? Like, don't you want to like make the world a better place while you're yeah. doing your job and having fun? It's challenging. It's, it makes it challenging. Totally. Exactly. So can you tell me a little bit about um, our entrepreneur allyship program? Can you explain where it came from, the idea, and where you hope that it goes? And then we'll talk about the companies in a second. Mm -hmm. So this summer after the George Floyd killing and when there was a, a broad social conversation going on in the country about systemic racism and the challenges that have been there for you know, many hundreds of years, but, but obviously for a long time, many people and companies all across the country were saying, well, what, do, what can we do? What are we doing? And challenging themselves. And it's not enough to not be racist. You have to actually be active in doing something to be anti-racist. And so in our way, we said, as a management team, remember we talked and we said, well, what can we do uniquely in our industry? And, um, and we said, hey, we have a lot of peer people in our company that are really passionate about this. We have a lot of experience in our company, people who have grown small businesses to big ones and helped companies grow. And so we said, what if we created um, our own version of kind of a incubator, but incubators are things that are out there that are great and there's a lot of them that help small companies get started and get big. But we said, what if we just became allies, like really allies with, two or three companies with uh, black owned businesses, really great entrepreneurs that were in this space. And we did just that. We were there for them. We did, we gave them access to resources, to experience, to contacts, to systems, to help them accomplish their dreams. So we created this program. We found three companies that you're going to hear from in just a minute who have amazing entrepreneurs who have every right and likely would be very successful unto their own right. But what we want to do is just do everything we can to help them get there faster and bigger. And the goal is we know that um, uh, power and money are often linked. And like we think the impact we can help drive here is by helping these companies achieve their dreams. We hope they become huge and big and successful. Our role models for other black owned businesses and um, BIPOC businesses, we hope that they become uh, leaders that inspire others to start their own businesses. We hope they invest in other businesses. We just want to create the ecosystem for black owned businesses in, in the consumer package good space to be way bigger than it would be. And so we started this program as an idea to try to get that going and become a role model and share it with others. The other companies can do the same, hopefully. And how do we measure if we're having any impact on these companies' growth? Well, the most important thing is we ask them if they're happy with what we're helping them do. <laughs> so you can hear from them. But we're actually, you know, developing that right now. We're working with some really great resources in industry to help us figure out what are the metrics we want to focus on? What are the pieces of this that we can make replicable so that other companies can take it and make it even better than us? So wouldn't it be a cool idea if, if this works, if you could have hundreds of companies out there doing the same thing with two or three businesses and the impact you could have? So that's what, what our ambition is. And we're just at the beginning of that journey humbly trying to figure out how to make it work. Okay, great. Um, all right, let's see. I think that it's time to say goodbye to you, John, because I'm going to start off with partake. I'm going to talk to Denise first. No, you're starting no. With, um, it's next. Oh, I lied. Oh, good. I'm starting with them. Um, they're all great. I'm starting with Jen, Teresa, Jeff, I'm not sure. I'm starting with Pip Snacks. Yes, so you are. for anyone out there who loves an heirloom corn snack, Hang on, because we have our first BIPOC-owned business who has been part of our Entrepreneur Allyship Program coming up. So thank you, John. Bye, all. See you. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. we X you. Okay, no offense, but bye. Okay, now we go. <laughs> this is beyond me, Mosey. Okay. okay. Don't give up. And you, Pip Snack. Ah, there they are. Come on.
coming at you. Okay, here comes Pip's next. Teresa, Jeff, Jen. Let's see, Jeff. Oh, they declined. Oops, come back. Jeff and Jen are brother and sister. Teresa and Jeff, I'm not making that up, right? Are married. And that's the first thing that I'll tell you about Pip Snacks. The second thing is, it's delicious. Hi. Hi. Okay, we've got Teresa. Hello. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? I'm awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Ah, oh, are you kidding? I'm so excited. So <laughs> we're gonna um, we're gonna dive in. Could you please introduce yourself? Tell me about your company, why this product, why it's personal to you, and then we'll take a break. Yeah, um, so I'm Teresa, and I'm one of the co-founders of Hipcorn. So you don't have today Jeff, who's my husband, and Jen, my sister-in-law, but we're a family business. And we launched Hipcorn really around this idea of an heirloom corn that we had discovered. So Jen, my sister-in-law, actually cannot eat normal popcorn. Uh, when we tell people that, they're like, what? Like, everyone can have popcorn. Like, that's terrible. Um, but she can have um, hip corn. And so, you know, we felt like there must be other people like Jen out there. And mm -hmm. yeah, we just, we took the corn and we launched it. There wasn't a lot outside of that. And it's just been an amazing roller coaster ride since then. And tell me about the kinds of products that you guys have, because they are delicious. It's like you're healthy pure heirloom corn variety of anything you really want to eat. <laughs> yeah, we, so our mission has really been to take this heirloom corn, use real corn and use real ingredients and reinvent our favorite nostalgic snacks. So popcorn, you know, everyone loves, but cheese balls, our corn dippers, which are, I think, better than the Frito scoops that I are mean, out there. I mean, I love them. I love them. <laughs> corn dippers. Yeah, they're so good, right? So good. Um, our crunchies, which are our version, you know, of a crunchy cheese snack that I'm sure mm -hmm. you guys all grew up loving and mm -hmm. our snack crackers. So our cheddar snack crackers are basically like a gluten free heirloom corn cheese it. Um, so it's, you know, our whole thing is, hey, we wanted to eat these items that we all grew up, realized that we shouldn't be eating things that turn our fingers orange. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were able to take our heirloom corn and get out there and give people the snacks that, you know, they want to be eating and now they can be proud to be seen eating them. I love it. So can you give me an idea how it started since you're an entrepreneur and you guys started this company yourselves, how it started, or where you started, how it's going. Yep, so we started in 2012 um, with hand stamp bags of pip corn selling at a food market because we didn't have the money to make, you know, real packaging and get a designer. Um, and I think what we love about our business is that it really wasn't anything outside of just the product that I think that sold it, right? Like we didn't have marketing budgets. We didn't have a real packaging job, you really just had that product inside the bag. And it just, um, I think, resonated because of how good it tasted. I think where we are today, and, you know, huge thank you to to John and, and you, Jen, and the O Farm team of supporting us this past year. But, you know, we've been able to live our dreams of having a family of heirloom products, which is crazy. <laughs> and just a you know, I think broader distribution outside of, you know, our of Brooklyn, which is where we launched. So, you know, I think that we, 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 we didn't imagine our business to be what it is today. And the fact that we're here is, is pretty crazy. Before we go, can you please tell us where people can find Pipcorn? I always call it Pip Snacks, because I just I, think we're miss you know, what do I know? But will you tell people where to find Pipcorn? Well, it's so funny that you say that because we like battled and turned like, do we put pip snacks on the bag or pip corn? Um, and so like we've talked about that a lot too, but you can find us nationwide. We're in Whole Foods, a fresh market. We're in Irwan in the West Coast. Um, we're in Raleigh. So you can go to our website, go to our store locator. We also ship, you know, direct to consumer on, our, on pip snacks.com. Um, and then we just launched in Canada, actually last year so we're in Canada too awesome okay great thank you so much 
we are going to um, say thank you and uh, goodbye and move on to Ibrahim. Okay, Ibrahim okay. with a dozen cousins. Let me You're see awesome. Can... Thanks, Teresa. Tell Jeff and Jen I said hey. I will. Thanks, Jen. I'll try yeah. to see if I can leave. <laughs> We're going to leave you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye, Pipcorn. Okay. Here comes a dozen cousins. A dozen cousins is um, so delicious. You guys would not even be able to stand it. It's beans. Beans. Here it comes. Ibrahim. Hey, how are Ibrahim. you? Hi, how are you? How are you doing? I'm doing I'm good. Doing well, back up a little bit. You okay? Yeah, no, I'm in a good spot. I was just trying to get my head in the oh. right spot on the camera okay. here. I think I think I'm good. Okay. I hear you. Believe me, I feel you. I was trying to find the light, you know. It's like Um, okay, Ibrahim, a dozen cousins. As you know personally, because I emailed you a couple of days ago. <laughs> and said, I won't survive quarantine without your Cuban black beans. Can you please send me some? And you said, how many? One case or two? And Mo said, one case is plenty. She was being polite. And I said, we're going to need two, please. <laughs> please, oh, please. So, I appreciate it. Oh, th you appreciate it. Thank you. I think this, um, this whole program is just to make sure I get good food. Um, can you please introduce yourself? Tell everyone about your company, why this product, why it's personal to you, and then we'll take a break. Uh, yeah, so my name is Ibrahim Basir. I'm the founder and CEO of A Dozen Cousins. Um, the brand, first and foremost, is named after my daughter and her 11 cousins. Um, I come from a really big family, so I actually have nine siblings. Um, and, you know, quick, quick fun fact is that there's now more than a dozen cousins. The family <laughs> I was, was going to uh, say. Yeah, we now we now we're at thirteen, but we're gonna we're gonna pause the brand that it doesn't. Um, but you know the 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 brand is just really all about combining uh, taste, health, and culture. You know that was our goal from the very beginning. We wanted to find a line of products that tasted really good, um, but that were also very healthy, um, and that combined this element of like culture and tradition. And so all of our recipes are traditional Creole, Caribbean, and Latin American dishes. You know, you alluded to the Cuban black bean. Uh, we have a Mexican pinto bean, a Trinidadian chickpea curry. Um, and then this past fall, we launched uh, two refried beans. And so um, I'm just really happy with the product. I feel like it hit on that initial goal that we had in that um, there's an element of nostalgia. There's an element of flavor. Um, but the products are ultimately something that you could eat. You know, you can never eat enough beans, right? Like it's, it's a, it's a yep. pretty healthful food. So you can eat them um, straight out of the, the bag. Last you can eat them straight out of the bag. You can eat them with rice. They're great on a salad. They're great. I mean, they're great in a soup. It's just they're they're already flavored, but not in an overwhelming way. They are another level. Thank um, you. Can you please give me an idea, since you're an entrepreneur, um, of where you started, how it's going? You know, tell us just a story about what it was like to start a business by yourself, you know, and... Uh, I know that you've worked in the CPG in industry for a long time. And so you can, you know, you can tell us where you come from a little bit and just how it's going now. And then, you know, hopefully you'll be able to tell us where we can find you. Yeah, you know, as you alluded to, I started my career in CPG. I had a chance to work on a lot of big brands. John and I actually worked together years ago on Annie's um, and I was leading new products for that business at the time. And, you know, honestly, the thing that really spurred me to start A Dozen Cousins was that there were so many great brands, very personal stories and, um, you know, this, this, this love that people have for the products. And I wanted there to be a brand that like that for kind of my my family and, and the community that I grew up in. Um, and so, you know, first and foremost, I'll say I'm just excited that we we're able to do that. You know, whenever I scroll through our Instagram and I see the pictures and I see people sharing the product and. Um, you know, I see people that look like me or people that, that love the culture and the, and the people um, from the places that we come from. Um, it makes me very happy. Um, you know, I would say just a quick business nugget in terms of where we started versus where we're at. When we initially launched the product, it was just available on Amazon. That was kind of the, the fastest and cheapest way for us to get started. Today, thankfully, we're in, you know, many hundreds of supermarkets across, across the country. You can find us at Whole Foods. You can find us at Target if you live on the West Coast. Um, and of course, the easiest way is just to go to our website. Uh, so www.adozencousins.com. Uh, you can check us out there kind of through the store locator or order the product directly on the site. Awesome. I mean, come on. That's such like, 
it's just such a huge success story. I'm so I'm so happy for you and all of those cousins. Those many many more cousins to come. <laughs> um, okay, then uh, thank you so much. But I'm sorry, I'm going to have to thank hang you. up on you because we still have partake. Denise, here we come. Okay, bye, Ibrahim. Thank you. Okay, hang in there, everyone. Don't go away because partake is awesome. Don't go away. Here comes partake. It's really good. Okay, all of these companies have websites. We are going to put them in story or whatever where you do the swipey uppy thing. Here comes partake. And then you can order them directly if you like. But support black-owned businesses, support BIPOC-owned businesses. Denise! Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? Great, happy that it's Friday. Oh, I know. I'm happy that it's Friday, too. Uh, is it Friday? I don't really know. I, 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 I said that, but I'm just in quarantine. What do I know? It's like all one, <laughs> one day. Um, okay, Denise, I'm sorry. You're my, you're my fourth person I'm talking to really quickly because I want people to hang in and hear about Partake. Um, can you tell us, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us about your company, why this product, how it is so personal to you, and then uh, we'll stop. But you have a great story, so I'll let you tell it. Sure thing. So I'm Denise Woodard. I'm the founder and CEO of Partake Foods. We're a line of delicious, nutritious, allergy-friendly snacks. We started with cookies, and we just launched brownies and baking um, my daughter, Vivian, who may barge in at any moment now, is nearly six, but right around her first birthday, I learned that she had a lot of food allergies. She's allergic to tree nuts, eggs, corn, which is really tricky, and bananas. Um, and I was really fed up with the options that I was finding from a taste perspective, from a nutritional perspective, most of all from like the emotional impact that I thought food allergies, yeah. having food allergies would have on her, like consistently being left out or having an option that she didn't feel confident sharing with her friends. And so I started Partake in August of 2017. You started Partake uh, in August of 2017. And I'm here to tell you because I have been the recipient of, uh, and I've also hunted down and bought these cookies myself. They are delicious. You would never know that they are allergen free. They are the perfect thing. If you have a, a child with allergies, if you just have a child and you want to feed them clean, good food, you just tuck this in. I mean, I think about the, the kids with allergies in my kids' classes and how helpful it would have been for the teacher to have these behind their desk so that when there was a birthday celebrated, when something came up, when there was something unexpected, your child could have a treat that they love. Because trust me, they would love it. And the kids having the other treats would be saying, can I have what she's having? That's what we Good. want. And we, I feel like the opposite is what happens. So that's what we wanted. That's what we want. That is what we want. Can you please give me an idea, since you're an entrepreneur, and I just think it's so fun to hear stories about where you started, how it's going. We started. And also, where can people find you? Sure thing. So we started in August of 2017, self-distributed, self-funded, which meant I sold my engagement ring to start the business and I stored cookies in a climate controlled storage unit and delivered them to natural food stores across New York City um, and New Jersey for about a year. And then we continually like baby stepped our way to growth. And I'm proud to share now you can find us at Target nationally. You can find us in Trader Joe's at Whole Foods and Sprouts and on our website at partakefoods.com. Come on, congratulations. Thank that you. is not easy to do. It's well, crazy it's that you've had such success. And John and the Once Upon a Farm team, because the problems, as the business gets bigger, the problems are scarier. So to have you all as a resource has been like immeasurably helpful. So I was rushing so much to get to you. I didn't ask, you know, to get to everyone. I didn't ask anyone, but have you found the program to be helpful? Yes. Oops. Sorry, my daughter must be on the iPad somewhere because grandma was just FaceTiming it interrupted. Yes, I think 
like tactical day-to-day -day stuff like is my promotion working at whole foods how do i analyze it what return should i be trying to get also from a social mission perspective that's been my most favorite part of the business learning that like as we grow we can continue to have a more positive impact on the world and so working with john to understand how they implemented those programs at annie's and now once upon a farm and so you know choosing which causes for us it's increasing diversity and inclusion and in cp in the consumer package good space it's eradicating childhood food insecurity and how do we use our business and weave that so deeply into our business that's like ever present to affect positive change to underrepresented and underfunded and under resourced communities Amazing. So great. Um, and yes, you are already doing all of those things. And it feels so good to be part of a company that is not just making the absolute best food out there for kids, which I know all of our entrepreneur ally programs are doing, um, or uh, all of our companies that we're allying with are doing, um, and for families. But to give back at the same time, or not give back, that just feels so like like oh, I'm giving back, but to just participate in the world and to just do your best to um, do things a different new way. People expect different things from their companies that they love than they used to, and they should. You should. You should be interested in what your company is doing. Yes, hold us companies accountable. Yeah, it's true. We have way too much. Not we. We're tiny. You're tiny. But you, you have to start mission-driven to grow into a big mission-driven company, right? So, um, you know, even if you start small, it's still so important. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy that we got to talk to you, Denise. We're going to have a swipe up thing to everyone in just a second. And I'm going to hang up with you and say a couple things I forgot. Bye. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Weekend. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay. Woo. All right, is it just me? I think so. Okay, then the things I forgot to say are Happy Lunar New Year, <laughs> which I mean, I for, and I forgot to I forgot to say that to Teresa. Teresa, Happy Lunar New Year. Um, and let's see, I forgot to say something else. I think that Denise has new brownies, but I think there are new there are new mixes that are also allergen free, so that's worth checking out. And I believe that Ibrahim has a new red bean, right? What kind of red bean are they? Red Creole beans that um, are just launching. So it's always fun when you're just launching something to have people check that out specifically because you're so nervous. Um, so, uh, you know, and I know I just wanted to go back to Pipcorn because that was at the beginning. Pipcorn also, please don't forget, if you want something crunchy, delicious with heirloom corn, gluten-free, clean 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 all of this food is so clean then please um please check it out pipcorn partake a dozen cousins and thank you oh my gosh i hosted a live it went okay i'll see you later bye guys happy friday <laughs>